All right, so it's time to travel once again. Um, I'm heading to Nice in uh, France. Uh, it's not going to be a tropical adventure this time, but it is going to be a Mediterranean adventure, rather. Uh, I'm going there alone. Matt is going to stay home in Norway for the winter. And he's going to make videos as well. So you'll get videos both from the Mediterranean and from Norway. Today I wanted to show you guys what I packed for my trip. So please stay tuned for that. Alright, I'm in the middle of my packing process. I'm wearing my long underwear and my big t-shirt because all the clothes that are, I'm gonna wear tomorrow are on the floor and I'm in the process of packing to go to Nice in France uh, so it's gonna be I'm gonna be there for the next three months and I want to show you today everything that I'm gonna pack what I'm gonna pack it in and I'm go I'll go through each item just quickly and tell you why I bring that particular item. It's not ultra light this time around. We're not going to the tropics, and uh, you know it's uh, and I have a lot of training gear, so it's not going to be ultra light, but it's still going to be lightweight as compared to most people. What most people pack, I think. So let's start with the clothing, and we'll go over here. Uh, first of all, I've got you know the clothes I'm going to wear tomorrow when I'm leaving. It's going to be everything I'm, I've got on right now, plus my pants. Uh, a sweater and a jacket so you know it's gonna be Mediterranean climate January February March I'm gonna be there alone and it's going to be you know at the coldest maybe six degrees Celsius at the warmest it could be 18 degrees Celsius so it's not very cold but it's not very warm either so I've got to bring a wide range of clothing to be able to suit all kinds of uh, temperatures so Right there, I've got my main items, my jacket, my pants, my, my sweater. Uh, if I got a little bit, if it's a little bit colder, I got these two fleece sweaters. I might just bring one, I'm, I haven't decided yet. Good if it's like five degrees Celsius and I have to go out. And here, it's just a rain jacket. I also have another sweater just in case and another t-shirt, just to change it up a little bit. I have an extra pair of socks, two pairs of underwear, and um, a hat just in case it's like five degrees and pretty cold so that's it that's it for the clothing except for the tr uh, you know the running clothes pretty basic you know it, it, keeping it lightweight and you know if you haven't checked out our ebook yet about lightweight traveling you should definitely check it out I'll put a link here and there's also one in the description it's all about ultralight backpacking and you know minimizing weight Packing light has everything to do with prioritizing. You know, do I really need two pants or can I just wear one pant for the like three months? And the answer is yes, because I want to keep it light. So I'll just, I, I wear one, one pair of pants anyway, so. All right, so let's move on to the running clothes. So I'm gonna be running a lot and uh, so I need, you know, most of it is just in case, to be honest. And, uh, so, but, but, you know, it is going to be a wide range of temperatures from 5 degrees to 20 degrees, so there's a bit of a difference there. If it's windy, I have this uh, vest, just a running vest, probably not going to use it much, but if it's really windy and rainy one day, you know, nice to have. And here's just uh, like some pants and a jacket to just pull over uh, after a run, for example, if I go into the mountain and I go for a run and then I'm going to take a bus home or something, I can just take this on top just to stay warm. If it's really cold, I don't think, again, I don't think I'm going to need this, but uh, some running tights. But I'm, I'm just going to put those on if it's like 3 degrees Celsius, which is highly unlikely. So, uh, same really goes for these uh, hat and, and gloves. Uh, unless it's under 5 degrees Celsius, I'm not going to use it. Um, T-shirt, that's probably going to be one of my main uh, items to wear. It's just like a technical T-shirt, you know, the moisture wicking technology. Same goes for this one, long sleeve technical shirt in case it's you know under 10 degrees I guess. The t-shirt would be like over 10 degrees, something like that. And then I have uh, three singlets. So it's, it's the, this singlet which is kind of a running, like an awesome running singlet. And this is more of a neutral running singlet, both technical fabric. 
synthetic, in other words. And this is just a cotton basic singlet uh, just to use when I'm in the gym. So I think you should go over there now. The camera, the camera mats. Mm -hmm. um, here's the shorts. So it's just like a bit of a longer shorts just for using in the gym or if it's a little bit cold. And my main running shorts, which is like super short and uh, very comfortable to run in. That's it for the running clothes. Well, I also have this, it's like a buff, I think they call it, to have here if it's cold, but again, just in case, I'm not really entirely familiar with what, how the climate is gonna be there right now. That's why I'm, I'm just covering my bases, just in case. And I also have, of course, my socks, which is the Injinji socks um, with the, the, the feet. <laughs> you know, to use for Vibram Five Fingers, but you know, you wanna use it for normal running shoes as well, because it allows your toes to splay out when you're running, which is an important thing. Which brings us to the shoes, and you can come a little bit closer. Uh, so here's my main. This is just my the shoes that I'm wear that I wear for walking. They're wear worn out really, so I don't run in them because it's gonna mess up with your forms. But I walk in them. I probably shouldn't. I don't know. Uh, and then my two main pair of shoes, which is the Ultra, the One 2.5, which is for the road. And then this this is the Ultra Superior 2.0, which is for the trails. So perfect. Uh, amongst those two, I should be able to cover any kind of surface. I'm going to be running mostly on road, but I'm also going to be going up to the mountains behind Nis, which is like a maritime Alps area, and uh, do a little bit of trail running. Oh, a lot of trail running, actually. Probably 40% trail, 60% road. This is the bags that I'm going to use. I'm going to use my backpack, and then this bag. That's it. So, you know, lightweight in relative terms to what other people tend to do, but uh, still heavy, you don't want to sort of lug around on it, but, but I'm going there, I know where I'm going to stay, I'm just going to, it's just a relocation rather than backpacking around, so those situations is okay. I also have this uh, running backpack that I got for Christmas, um, all spring, pretty tight, I haven't tried it out yet, so I'm going to use that for when I'm going on day trips into the mountains, I'm going to, you know, run and I need my bananas and all that stuff. I also have this. It's just like a hydration belt for from Ultimate Direction. Very comfortable, just for like shorter runs. And none of my runs at this point are very long actually, so this is sufficient for most trips. I'm gonna bring three books. Uh, so this is a book just about different marathons around the world, kind of like just like a casual read. Uh, and of course, Doug Douglas Graham, Nutrition and Athletic Performance. I thought I'd give it a re read, just about yeah, nutrition and athletic performance. And this is my main book that I'm looking forward to reading. I got Mads gave it to me for Christmas. Daniel's running formula. It's uh, Jack Daniels is one of the best coaches apparently in distance running, and he wrote this book. And it's somewhat of a bible, I hear. So I'm gonna read this and get really get really technical with my running. So that's for uh, entertainment and study. This is my smoothie jar that I'm gonna drink smoothies out of. I just bring my own. Water bottle, BPA free of course. Just a, a scale to weigh my food. I, I like to do that just to learn and know what I'm eating. Have an objective, you know, quantifiable way to relate to what you're eating. Next up, as I'm climbing over everything, cards, you know, money, basically, uh, passport, check it out. This is how it is when you're traveling a lot. Every page of the passport, I got so many stamps, it's ridiculous. Like the police at the, uh, uh, the customs in Norway once asked me, like, they were a little bit suspicious of how worn out my passport was, because it's like, it's pretty new, but it's already worn out. Well, I travel a lot, so. And money, I got uh, euros, cash, Norwegian cash, and some various other currencies that I thought I'd just um, get changed into euros at the airport or something. A little bag to keep everything in, and keys for the apartment that uh, I'm gonna stay in, and uh, this little thing is just for like uh, internet banking. GoPro, of course, uh, in Matt's hands there. Uh, and a bag for the GoPro, another case for the GoPro. Headphones, like 
good headphones if I want to listen to music or something like that. Uh, hard drive. What's this called in English? Band-Aids? Band-Aids. Uh, and then my toothbrushes. I have two toothbrushes for different purposes. Uh, and uh, floss. And some, some things that you stick between the teeth <laughs> to sort of clean them. I also have a, a, t a nail clipper and some, some of these things that I might be using. I don't know. My Garmin 630, which is like, I love this watch. It's so cool. Good for running. Um, my charger. Uh, over here we got the microphone that uh, all the Patreon users uh, got us. Basically, we, uh, you know, we we have an exclusive Patreon page where you can sign up and get monthly exclusive content. We do live hangouts. We do Q and A specifically for the people on Patreon. So you can you can join there as well if you're interested. Uh, and one of the milestones was to get enough money to buy a microphone, and we reached the milestone and we got the microphone. So. Thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Cable, MP3 player, USB stick, uh, headphones, computer, charger for the computer, mouse, mouse pad, and a notebook. Nothing can beat, you know, old school paper and pen sometimes. Here's the Garmin uh, heart rate strap to, to get your heart rate when you're using the Garmin. And that is about it. A lot of stuff, I would say. You know, I'm used to traveling quite light, but the thing is, depending on where you, you're going, uh, you have to pack lighter or heavier. Most of the time, Mads and I, we've been going to the tropics where you don't need much clothes at all. Um, and it's much easier to keep it light. Whereas now, I'm going to a little bit of a colder place, I need a little bit more clothes with me, obviously. And also, I'm totally into running, as you know, which means I need the full spectrum of running gear available and running shoes and all that. So a bag and a backpack, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check the bag and then I'm going to carry the backpack, obviously. I might also have a little bit of a bag on the side just uh, for my food tomorrow on the plane. Remember that we've made lots of other videos regarding packing and regarding traveling. So you can check out our traveling playlist if you're interested in that. And of course, we have that ebook that I mentioned the way of the fruitful traveler which is all about traveling the world and leaving everything behind and living a nomadic life and packing and ultralight backpacking and fruit tourism and all that stuff. Alright, hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for watching and I will see you around.